Hi everyone and welcome. So today we have a wee Q&A. This is a long time coming. Today we're going to run through some commonly asked questions relating to training, nutrition, general well-being and also day-to-day -day behaviours. And today we're going to kick it off with some training questions. These are questions that typically arise within our Facebook community. There has been this misconception that if you lift weights, heavy weights, that you will increase in size, increase significantly in muscle mass and also overall larger frame. Times are changing, we are learning more and more, becoming more aware of the benefits of resistance training to overall health, lifestyle, longevity, and also body composition. So if you would like that toned look that we often hear about, basically that is building of muscle and also a body fat percentage in which you can see the muscle that you've built. There are times, and in my workouts, I use lighter weights, higher reps, but building a strong, solid body with compound movements, progressively overloading over a certain period of time, builds muscle. And trust me, it is hard to build muscle. And as you know, I love lunges and squats. My legs have not got any bigger. In fact, they've just got tighter and more defined. And the same applies to the shoulders, for example. I have got stronger, I have built muscle. However, they have not grown at a substantial rate where they are very big. High reps, low reps, mid range. If you've been doing my workouts for a while, you will notice that I generally go from maybe five reps all the way up to 30, sometimes 100 reps, but that was the finisher of end game. And that was more of a mental challenge. Typically when lifting weights, I do stay in and around eight reps to maybe 15 reps during that time period. Most of the time periods within the workouts are about 30 seconds up to a minute. So generally, again, eight to 15 reps is where I usually stand when I'm lifting the weights. And in relation to the actual weights themselves, I may do the same exercise with a heavier weight. The next week, I may do the same exercise for the same time period with a lighter weight. I do like to move within a certain rep range, maybe five reps up to those 30 reps. And research has shown that it's not just that typical, maybe eight to 12 rep range that builds muscle. Anything in between five to 30 is great for hypertrophy. Strength training, maybe five reps or less, is something that I don't actually do within my channel. However, there are actually some exercises where I may actually go as low as five reps. And that could be some form of push-ups, even some bent over rows or squats. And when that occurs, it's typically due to the actual tempo within the time scale. So when you're doing cardio, you will absolutely burn more calories than maybe a resistance or strength training workout. In fact, I never really set my watch to record during those resistance or strength workouts. I would likely burn more calories walking Winston than actually an hour of solid lifting. But it's not so much about the calories burned during that period. It's more about how your body will adapt following that session. Following lifting heavy, within reason, with good form, putting stress on the body, sending a signal to the body that you need to keep strong. It's important to really not focus on the calories burned within that certain time period. With the likes of resistance training, yes, the calories are sometimes significantly lower compared to cardio. However, what you're doing is you're sending a message to the body to adapt. Cardio, you don't need a lot of strength in order to perform cardio. Specifically running, of course it is an impact, single leg, one after another. However, you really don't need a lot of strength for running. Your body receives this message and it will pair muscle down over time. Resistance training, if you're lifting, this will send a message to the body that it needs to build. It needs to protect itself. It needs to be able to do the job. I have seen it before and it is all too tempting. If you want to lose weight on the scales, you simply up cardio, reduce calories. But what you don't realize is that you're actually burning away at those muscles, losing muscle mass. So over time, your body adapts to all this cardio. So therefore you have to be able to sustain that level of activity. It's just something I would like you to think about. When you do do a lot of cardio, yes, you may be losing weight on the scales, but quite a bit of that is going to be muscle and fat. And honestly, I think a lot of us would rather maintain that muscle. I actually love cardio. 
I enjoy how it makes me feel, plus I know I'm doing my heart a good service. It is absolutely possible to lift weights and do cardio and get great results. It's just when you take it one extreme to the other. Simple things to consider is maintaining that high protein diet. So that if you are incorporating cardio, you're going to try and resist that muscle breakdown. If you are wanting to do resistance training and build some muscle, but also use cardio, I would suggest using your resistance training as a gauge as to how you're progressing. Trying to progressively overload in those lifts, even though you maybe are incorporating some cardio. And also, of course, scheduling those cardio sessions in and around a workout that won't affect your actual lifting too much. So if you're performing a certain movement and you're feeling any strain, I suggest you stop that movement and perform practice at body weight. Now some movements you can definitely, once you perfect it, aim towards that mind-muscle connection that little bit more, but at the very beginning, it's really about getting that movement down. Once you do perfect that movement and you're able to perform it with no straining, you can then tweak certain exercises to actually suit you and your biomechanics. So for example, squats, I may sometimes have my feet here with my toes slightly out. You may prefer a slightly closer stance with toes facing forward, or again, even wider with toes even more pointed out. Queries relating to squat depth and lunge depth often come up. So in regards to that, it is basically as low as is comfortable for you. There is no point straining in case that actually injures you. So ease into the depth and you may notice over time, gradually you will get that little bit deeper. So for a squat, I may go slightly lower than you in a squat or you may actually go that little bit lower than me. And even when it comes to something as simple as a shoulder press, sometimes I will perform a shoulder press quite low and then bringing it up. Other days, I may just bring it to here and back up. So I could bring it to here and back up, lower, back up. Really, I do just like to play about with the range of movement. So certainly if you're seeing me on the screen, bear that in mind that it's not an actual how-to when I'm in the workout. I tweak little movements here and there to sit how I feel on that day and my own personal preference. Even a bent over row, some days I will pause it that little bit longer at the top, other times I will slow the eccentric down that little bit more. Sometimes when I'm doing leg lowers, I will put my back of my head flat on the mat and do my leg lower. Other times I will actually cup my head, look down at my feet as I do my leg lowers. Again, it's just how you feel on that day. And of course, Romanian deadlifts, I've been doing those for about 20 years. I know how my body works. Some days I go that little bit deeper. Other days I'll go that little bit faster into the actual descent and then slower up. Other days really slow on the eccentric, pause at the bottom and drive up. Every day can be slightly different. And basically, I'm just trying to get that point across that there's so much information out there. Do it this way. Don't do it that way. And really, at the end of the day, if you've got the fundamentals down and you're feeling good, do it your own way. Fed cardio or fasted cardio. A lot of this comes down to your preference. If you train really early in the morning prior to work, you may simply not feel like setting that alarm 30 minutes even earlier in order to have something light to eat. And you feel fine during that workout, so fasted cardio suits you perfectly. However, if you feel that it is really affecting your actual workout, your output, your overall effort, then maybe you could consider having something light, maybe 30 to 60 minutes prior to working out. The difference between fat oxidation, between fasted and fed, is quite minimal. So again, it is your own preference. I wouldn't think too much into it. At the end of the day, if you try to do that fasted state, but your workout output is lower, you're not simply going to burn as much energy anyway. So again, it's your preference. So at the moment, there is actually very little research as to how specifically to train for this period of our lives. However, it is recommended to try and incorporate some resistance training and steady state cardio into your training, some aerobic activity for the heart and also weight bearing for those muscles and bones. And it's never too late to begin, starting with even overall daily activity. You could maybe consider increasing your step count 
and this will actually bring great benefits to your overall health. So if you're currently maybe doing quite low steps, maybe average two or 3,000 steps a day, if you were to increase that to maybe five or 6,000, that is double the amount of daily activity in your life, as simple as that. And in fact, you will be getting more benefit from going from 2,000 to 5,000 compared to somebody who's actually doing 15,000 and increases that to 20,000. And in regards to the muscle and bone strengthening activities, these can of course be body weight only, it could be yoga. Bands are also an excellent option. And also you could try out those dumbbells. Maybe one to two sessions per week will bring huge benefits to your overall health. There is not one best form of exercise suggested for this period. However, it is suggested that incorporating some form of resistance training will bring big benefits over time. So yes, these workouts are slightly different in that you're maybe not doing the same number of sets, four reps per week, and then the next week exactly the same and so on. Every single week, every single workout is that little bit different. However, the fundamentals, the weights that you use will mostly be the same. If I'm going for a heavier session, such as within iron, I know what my weight is generally going to be for a row, a shoulder press, chest press, lunge, squats, and Bulgarian lunges, etc. But that isn't always the case. I don't always go for the maximum weight that I can lift for those reps. But one thing is sure, I do progressively overload, but it doesn't mean progressively overloading only in regards to the weight. I am progressively overloading in regards how hard I train, the intensity, the effort, the control, the awareness, the actual mind-muscle connection. I get better and better and better. Every single workout is a practice session for me. I'm continuously practicing in the zone. I lift with intent. I'm thinking about each rep, how can I make it harder? I almost seek out the intensity, seek out the challenge. And this will come, you will get a certain gauge on those weights that you like to use. And I'm sure if you have been joining me for a while, you can pretty much gauge if there was a squat workout, what weights you may like to use. Of course, this may differ depending on the rest to work period ratios within the actual workout. There are times where I definitely need to go that little bit lighter. However, if the sets are maybe 45 second rest, I know that I will go that little bit heavier. And that's why I love formatting these workouts so much. I don't need to go super heavy on any of my actual exercises. I love playing with the format, the order of the actual exercises, the overall structure, the tempo, the rest periods, and also the combination of body weight exercises. So sometimes I may do chest press with 220s, other times, chest press with two tens will feel as challenging on the muscles if it is towards the end of the actual exercise or if I've just done body weight push-ups. These are just examples to highlight where you don't need to necessarily go super heavy and never feel like you're not working hard if you need to reduce the weights. It's all relative to what you've actually just done. I have no problem dropping my weights. Focusing sometimes too much on being perfect will actually hold you back. So yes, with bicep curls, I do often give tips and hints on the screen, trying to remind you to keep those elbows as steady as you can. However, if your elbows move that little bit, it is completely fine. The point is that you're trying to keep them as steady as possible. So you're aware of your movement, you're aware that you're trying to keep them steady and lift solely with the bicep and you will minimize the momentum that may come along with those bicep curls. The same applies when it comes to, for example, push-ups for me. So if I'm doing push-ups, I'm looking straight down at the floor. My neck is in line with my spine. My whole body is one long unit. However, if I'm in the middle of EMOM, for example, and I'm getting really tired, I will stop the reps and take a break. However, if I am still able to hit parallel with my arms on that push-up, but my neck is coming down, I'm looking at my feet, I will continue. I'm still hitting the range that I want to do on those push-ups. However, yes, my neck has dropped a little bit. That doesn't mean I am straining myself. If I'm straining myself, I will absolutely stop. So I just wanna get the point across that, yep, you need to focus on form, on technique, but please don't let it hold you back either. 
Another great example of this is simple barbell chest press. Some people don't feel comfortable bringing the actual barbell down to their chest due to maybe limited mobility in their shoulders, for example. So that doesn't mean that they should part through and strain in order to touch the bar to the chest. That means they may just need to work with keeping the bar slightly above the chest. The same applies with squats and lunges. If your lunge is not hitting the floor, it really doesn't matter. As long as you're able to move in a range that is comfortable for you, you're able to get a solid session in, and you're not actually feeling inflamed or tender after. So yes, focusing on good form throughout. However, don't let it hold you back. Many people do not like high intensity training. Simple as that. It's the same as loads of people don't like to go out and run. Lots of people don't like to do maybe bodyweight only exercises. Many people prefer to do higher reps. Other people maybe like to do just three reps of a certain exercise. And by no means do you need to do high intensity training. I do high intensity training, first of all, because I actually love it. I love the challenge and of course that feeling after. But also I do acknowledge the actual benefits of getting my heart rate up towards that max at least once per week. But there are certainly many ways to elevate that heart rate that little bit higher. And you may actually notice that within resistance training, particularly some of the workouts involving the likes of Renegade Rose or Bulgarian lunges, etc., your heart rate really does elevate. And although typically research on the cardiovascular system has been associated with cardio exercises, times are changing and there will be more considerations into the actual impact of resistance training on our cardiovascular health. I would recommend if you're new to this and you really want to make some changes within your nutrition to maybe spend at least two weeks just having a look at what you're eating, considering it. So looking at, for example, the protein within an actual portion of chicken or fish. For me, I like to keep it very simple aiming for about three to four meals per day, plus maybe two or three small snacks as well. I would definitely have protein with every single meal that I have, and also often within the snacks as well. I typically hit around 180 grams of protein per day, roughly. Some days it can be higher, some days slightly lower. I have a protein bar every single day, and I have done for the last maybe five or six years. So aside from that approximate protein goal that I try to hit most days, which is actually quite easy, if I have protein within each of my three to four meals per day, plus a couple of snacks, then the fats and carbohydrates, I basically manipulate those to how I feel on the day. If I wanted to sit down and have a slice of cake, I can absolutely have that. And the truth is that one slice of cake for the calories it's not going to wipe out any progress that you've made in regards gaining muscle or losing fat. That 400 calorie donut cupcake, for example, is not going to have huge impact in your actual progress. And that sometimes is the problem. When you think that that has derailed everything that you've worked for, then you just completely jump off that bandwagon. I don't actually count my calories. However, it is definitely, again, another useful tool, particularly in today's society where highly palatable foods is so readily available. I mean, you just walk out of your house and you're bombarded with highly processed foods. And even actually from within your home, you can get any type of meal delivered to your home within a few minutes. It is useful to learn about the foods that you actually eat, particularly those processed foods. You can download an app for free and actually simply put in the foods that you eat day-to-day -day basis, even for two weeks. You will learn actually a lot and you may be surprised at just what you are eating. You may be substantially lower in recommended fiber content and often people's daily protein intakes are quite considerably lower than maybe what they should be. Certain periods I would eat out more than other times. So I like the flexibility of actually not tracking and not focusing too much on what I am actually eating. But when I do eat out, I generally go for the lean protein with a side of vegetables and then carbs. I tend to eat my protein first. I do fill up on the protein, even if it's a starter, I will pick up the protein option. But this approach for me has worked really well. Socially, I'm able to go out and enjoy certain foods, of course. At home, simple meals for me and my family, nothing too fancy by any means. And the general structure that obviously isn't rigid, 
sometimes three to four meals a day plus those snacks. As I mentioned, I've pretty much typically ate the same, if not a little bit more over the years. So if I was to even it out week on week, I'd probably eat approximately the same amount. Certainly days, maybe post a leg session, I would eat that little bit more. But for me, having that balance, eating a wide variety of foods, and also incorporating that resistance training and my daily walks, which is minimum about 10,000 steps, I have been able to build muscle over the years and keep lean. In fact, I have gained more muscle. I have no idea what I weigh at the minute, but just having a balance of food, I'm not one extreme to the other. I'm usually in the middle. What I eat is mostly unprocessed, but of course, I do love those protein bars. I try to eat as much unprocessed foods as possible, but of course, everything in moderation. I don't take any pre-workout, however, I do take a good cup of coffee. Generally 30 minutes before I begin my exercise, that coffee usually gives me a good boost of energy. Whereas many people love that pre-workout prior to exercising, so again, it's your own preference. So meal timings are an interesting topic. So if you're having three to four meals a day and maybe a couple of snacks here and there, you're gonna be typically eating every three to four hours. Now, years ago in regards to training, post training, you had that anabolic window where you would maybe eat 30 minutes post exercise. And there is definitely something to be said about having a routine. However, due to the fact that I would eat every three to four hours anyway, with the workout, if I eat an hour or two before it, I'm gonna eat an hour or two after it anyway. So I really don't need to think about that window. It is recommended that you're not leaving it too many hours post workout in order to promote muscle protein synthesis to build and repair those muscles because the muscles have actually been broken down whilst you've actually been exercising. You don't actually build muscle during lifting exercise in general. It's actually post that the muscles repair and grow back bigger. And that is why rest and recovery is so important, not to mention sleep. Sleep definitely has an impact on those grilling cues. I'm sure we're all aware when we've had maybe a late night, the next day we just want those fast carbs. We're hungry, we could eat everything in the house. But also lack of sleep can play a big part on our circadian rhythm. So we all have a bit of a natural circadian rhythm. My natural circadian rhythm has changed over the years. But if, for example, I have been out late one night, I definitely notice the big difference. My hunger cues are definitely all array the next day. I do tend to eat a lot more if I've been up late at night. So it's just something to be aware of. Sleep is actually one of the most important parts of well-being. I do probably eat quite a high protein diet compared to maybe other people, and by no means does anybody else need to eat that high. But for me, I actually love eating protein. It really does fill me up. And you can see why there's such an emphasis on protein when really it is the building box of the body. And in fact, our muscles, 75% made up of water, but 20% of protein. I've been training for a while and the skills haven't changed. However, my clothes feel looser. That's exactly what you want. In fact, I find trying to minimize the actual movement of the skills is a good thing. So if, for example, you're trying to lose body fat, and you're also wanting to build muscle, and you notice that the scales really aren't moving one way or another, but your clothes feel different, or you're actually progressing in your lifts, that means that body recomposition is likely taking place. So you're actually losing body fat and building of muscle at the same time. This definitely happens more so if you're new to training, but for me personally, I've always pretty much at, at maintenance, I would say. So, my weight definitely goes up and down every single day. I don't weigh myself, but I just know that by my clothes. So there's certain times I may put on a pair of shorts and they're definitely too tight for me to wear that day. And that's just being honest. The next day though, I could put them on and they're fine. So whether it be levels of stress, sleep, foods that you've eaten, even inflammatory post-workout. Of course, our bodies are gonna change on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is something that I just wanna mention in regards um, skills. Sometimes people would mention that their, their weight hasn't went down and they've maybe weighed themselves once every week for a few weeks. So for example, if somebody was to stand on the skills at the same time, same day, every week, say every Friday morning, for example, that certain Friday morning could give a completely different measurement 
to what Thursday did, previous, or Wednesday, or Tuesday. And it can be too easy to put so much emphasis on that weekly weigh-in. You're only weighing yourself once per week, when really your body goes up and down in weight throughout the week. It is completely normal. It depends on the person. Scales, if you're wanting to lose a significant amount of weight, absolutely, scales over time will show trends. But please note that is over time. It's not day to day. Nobody will actually lose weight day to day on, a nat on an actual decline smooth line if it was actually placed on a graph. In fact, it would be very, very, very zigzagged. And for that reason, I would say if you are looking to maybe lose a significant amount of weight or you have a good understanding of the scales and it doesn't provide any issues for you, it can be better actually weighing yourself every single day, but just jotting down that number, moving on with your day. And then at the end of the week, taking an average, the same again for the next week, take an average and so on, and then look for those trends. But again, I must stress the trends will appear over a longer period of time, not a week. You cannot get a trend over one week because on the Monday, you may be a certain weight. By the Friday, you're a lot lighter. Saturday, so you may be up four pounds and that is just simply the way it goes. I would stress again that scales are not a measure of progress for pretty much most people. In fact, you can get smaller, build muscle, become stronger and lose body fat and the scales will not move. So yes, simply put, using scales really can reflect trends over a certain period of time but you must recognize day to day there will be natural fluctuations. So if you understand that and don't put too much emphasis on those daily weigh-ins, then they can be a useful tool. However, again, scales are definitely not needed to mark progress, such as getting stronger, building muscle, and also losing fat. Simply looking in the mirror, how your clothes feel, energy, etc., all play a part in recognizing that progress. I don't weigh myself, but if I did, I would be pretty certain I've gained about a stone in weight prior to having my children. I'm still exactly the same dress size. However, the clothes do fit better. I have a smaller waist and I'm a lot more stronger. So best diet, optimal nutrition. Same can be said about optimal training. As you may notice from most of the questions today, I will say it depends. I am not, and most people in fact are not, able to make a bold statement claim such as such and such diet is the best. This is the best type of exercise. This is the best way to do a bicep curl. And no, it's not a very exciting response, but it is the truth. There is not one best diet for everyone. There is not one magic food or supplement that will suddenly make you lose weight, build muscle, smaller waist, bigger glutes. And that is exactly why I am not too pedantic about smaller details. I enjoy waking up, training in a way that I feel like I want to be challenged. Some days it's higher intensity, some days it's heavy lifting with slow reps. Some days I might have oatmeal for my breakfast, other days eggs on toast. On a Saturday night I might have an Indian takeaway, another Saturday night I might just cook a steak at home. Some days I might lift those 8 kgs for shoulder press, other days 15s. There are some things that I definitely consider a bit of a routine for me however, so I'll share these. They're quite simple, they're not fancy but they work for me. I am a big weather watcher in Northern Ireland, it does rain quite often, so I'm constantly checking the weather in order to try and get out for a walk with just myself or with Winston. At least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half depending on time. So that gets my daily steps in, it gets me moving and it's also time to think and do some work often when I'm walking on my phone. I try to keep at least one type of fruit readily available sitting out in the kitchen so anytime that I'm feeling peckish I've got that fruit just sitting there ready to be eaten. I don't like waste so if it's sitting there I'm more likely to eat it. I try to hit all muscle grips at least twice a week and when I am training I use it as a genuine practice session. I'm always finding that little bit of a tweak with a bent over row, RDLs or lunges that suits my body and my biomechanics to make it that little bit more intense. So for me, it's not always about increasing that weight. It's actually about connecting with that exercise even better. I aim to get at least eight hours sleep. And to be honest, if I do get five or six, I really notice the difference. Just focusing on that protein intake, at least one portion per meal, three or four times a day, plus some snacks, and then the fats and carbohydrates, I 
can split up any which way I want through the day. That usually involves eating every three to four hours. And yep, sometimes these meals would actually be quite late at night. And yes, studies have shown eating later in the evening does not correlate to actually gaining weight. What it means is sometimes it can be that time of the night where people do tend to actually overeat. But eating a meal at that specific time alone will not lead to actual weight gain. If you're like me, you really will look forward to that session. It's time for you. It's your time to challenge yourself. I really do contribute the training that I've done over the years to building me up mentally as well as physically. All those moments where you maybe feel like you can't do something, you realize that you can. You can, you just need to persevere, push through and you come out the other side. And sometimes you can really surprise yourself. And that's why training can actually be an expression of how you're feeling. So there's certainly different days where I'm feeling ready to go for it and I can go even harder. Another day, I'll still do the workout, still train with intensity, but it may feel that slightly bit different. And that's fine too. You won't make progress every single day, lift heavier and heavier and heavier. If that was the case, I'd probably be lifting about 200 kgs on each arm for a chest press. So you may notice I'm not too pedantic about certain aspects of nutrition and training. The reason being is over the years, having read so much research, there's always a bit of a middle ground. I would say the best way to move your body and to eat is a way that allows you to live your life to the maximum. And for me, eating really healthy, nutritious food actually makes me feel amazing. Having a really good, challenging session makes me feel amazing. I'm gonna be a bit cliche here, but life really is short. Life is so short. My eldest daughter is now in big school and her first year has passed really quickly. I'm 38 and what I can say is, I am so glad that I did not spend the last 20 years focusing on the size of my butt or zoning in on every single little detail. Having goals, but not waiting to reach those goals before I can live my life to the fullest. I'm a huge advocate of setting goals. However, sometimes when you set goals, you're just zoned in on hitting that one goal that you actually forget to live day to day. And what happens when you reach that goal? Sometimes you're a bit lost. Having a goal, having a destination is brilliant, but remember to enjoy the journey too. So that finishes those questions. As you may notice, I have answered those questions very much on a neutral basis. So it depends for many of them. We're often bombarded with statements and they're so conflicting. One will say this, one will say the opposite. How about you just consider both sides and make up your own mind? Learn a little bit more about nutrition, perhaps track for two weeks. You will learn a lot. Remember the skills, you do not need them. I've never really used them with clients of mine. However, if you do want to actually track, remember, don't rely on them on a day-to-day -day basis. That's not how it works. A majority of us could benefit from increasing our protein intake on a daily basis, perhaps also increasing our daily steps. You may train hard in the gym or at home, but daily activity is a major factor in overall well-being. Aiming to get a good night's sleep and eating food that makes you feel good. But it's important you have to be able to live your life. And moving on, it is summertime here in the UK. I hope you are really enjoying the weather wherever you are. And I'm sure some of you are wondering what's next. So prior to COVID, I had my own business. I was a personal trainer. And I had some wonderful clients on a one-to-one -one basis. And that I learned so much during those years. Training became so much more than just the physical aspects, the psychological, the behaviors, the mindset, but also acknowledging our limitations for example, on time or sleep or other commitments. And I really do try to stress that it is all about that balance. We all have different priorities in our lives. So it is important to not look at what somebody else is doing because what they're doing, that may be their main priority in life. It may not be yours. Something has to give if you're wanting to prioritize something else. And for me, training is a huge part of my life but it's not my priority. My priority is actually just appreciating every single day that I'm here. I want to feel strong, confident, full of life. I want to have excess energy when I play on my grandchildren when I'm older. Sometimes just stepping back and thinking about your core values. It puts a lot of things into perspective and allows you to focus on what really matters. And a huge part of my life is actually you joining me. I am honored that you actually join me 
to train. When I was in my early 20s, I wanted to train and I was always by myself. <laughs> I was always running, training by myself. None of my friends trained. Um, so now I feel so lucky to have so many amazing people to train with, so thank you. It has genuinely been a blast the last couple of years. So thank you so much for joining me and being there for me. I hope you know that I'm always working to try and improve how I can connect with you. I am actually currently working on a wee something, and this is based on future training, reflecting certain limitations that we do have at the moment. But the core values will remain the same, training to feel absolutely amazing after every single session, to look forward to your training with so much variety and different challenges, and of course, build some wee muscle along the way. So in the meantime, I hope you continue to train really hard. Trust me, we're gonna need that strength and endurance. Thank you so much for taking time from your day to watch me, to listen to me, and I can't wait to see us all again really soon. Bye! You call, I fall, there's a light.